Hello, welcome to this lecture. This is a test lecture. So I'm going to introduce you to the Universal Serial Bus or USB. There's so much that goes on with the USB that we overlook or are not even aware of. Okay. Anywhere from the USB C connector or this connector right here and the iPhone this is in my iPhone 15 Pro Max, or if you use a uh, an Android phone like the Samsung Galaxy, whatever phone you're using, you have a USB type C connector. But inside that connector is this thing called the universal serial bus that really is a bunch of wires that carry ones and zeros voltages through the circuitry to communicate with the chips, the brain, the chip inside your phone, inside your devices, inside your laptop, the one that I'm using to record this video. Okay. So I'm going to break down both the history, the hardware, and some of the communication that takes place, these voltages, ones and zeros, for the USB standard. And why we even have it in the first place, what was the need, okay? So here's an overview of what we're gonna cover. We're going to look at the definition of the USB, the overview of its significance in modern electronics. Why is it important? Why, did you, why would we even make the USB standard in the first place. Okay. What's the benefit if you have standards already? Then you have how the USB have the, uh, the USB standards, how they've evolved. Okay. You have USB type A, type B, type, type B connector, the C connector. What's the difference between the connector and the protocol? We're going to cover all of that in this lecture. Okay. And how they're all connected when it comes to the USB communication protocol. Now, just to clarify, there's a difference between the connector and the protocol. USB is a type of communication protocol, but I'll get into that. So what is USB? It's the universal serial bus. What is a bus? A bus really is a connection, a wired connection from one chip or device to another device. So for instance, you can have your USB cable. You know, if I were to pull this out here, I've got my USB-C cable and wire. I'm not sure if you can see that. That has a USB-C connector, yes, but inside of it are wires that carry the USB, the universal serial bus data, the data in the universal. So it's the bundle of wires, really, that carry the information. Okay. And here we have various type of connectors for when you want to carry that information from device to device. Each device or com computer or whatever is different. They're going to have different connectors like type A connector, type B connector, type B mini connector, like for your, you know, your um, controller. I have a gaming controller for my, you know, PS PlayStation 5 if you play any video games, right? The different connectors. But the connector is different from the protocol. Why do they call it USB 2.0 or USB 3.0? And then type A, type B. The shape of the connector has its own thing. Honestly, check this out. You can have any one of these connectors and run a different set of wires and a different communication protocol. You could run I squared C. Okay. Protocol through the wires in any of these connectors. You can have a type A USB connector that runs I squared C, I three C, UART. But it just so happens that we use the, we run the USB communication protocol through these types of connectors. Okay. But I'm just showing you the difference. I know I've repeated it multiple times. The real standard is this 2.0. The 3.0, 3.1, 3.2, this specifies the speed and voltages which you send signals through the cables and wires. So there's nothing to do with the connector. All right. Nothing to do with the connector. Okay. I really had to get that out. Now let's look at the overview of why USB is so important. It has a great impact. On electronics. I'm going to read from my notes here. One of the biggest benefits and impacts on the USB uh, on technology is its universal connectivity. See, there are so many devices 
There are so many devices from your printer, your computer keyboard, my gaming controller, right? My arcade stick. Okay, because I'm a Street Fighter player. There are so many devices that use this universal standard and the connectors to go along with it. This is USB 2. This carries USB 2.0 in the wire, in the cable. Everybody's using USB 2.0, 3.0, whatever. So it's universally impactful because everybody has gotten on the same program, the same communication protocol. It wasn't like that before. Different computers back in my day, okay, in the 90s, in the 80s, they would use uh, different connector types, tons, tons of different connector types, okay? And they wouldn't be compatible. You'd have to get this printer with that connector type, this this connector, this different, you had like five, six, seven, eight different connectors. But what the universal serial bus standard did is that these wires in this standard carried so many different types of signals and work for so many different types of devices, companies and manufacturers started using the connector and protocol more in their products. And now every device has some kind of USB hookup and USB communication protocol, okay? So what does that mean? That means then it's easier to just find products that you need, okay? Cameras, and here's some other devices, cameras, keyboards, mice, for charging, the keyboard that I'm charging right now is using USB-C, okay, and USB-3 to charge it. Another benefit of the Universal Serial Bus protocol is that it's easy to use. You can just plug it into a computer and it works. There's no complicated setup, no weird signal pinging that you have to do, okay? You can connect and disconnect devices while the system is running without having to restart them. So y'all don't, don't know about the times when you actually did have to shut down or restart your computer if you didn't want your device to have problems. Like you have to shut down your computer, unplug it, the device, shut the computer back on, okay? And vice versa or conversely. Another benefit of USB is how it's evolved in speed. USB has been getting faster and faster every new standard, okay? From USB 2.0, USB 3, and now USB 4, you're going up and up in the different, much faster speeds, much faster than you would in, say, a UART communication protocol, I squared C and all that. They're in the lower, they're in the kilobytes range, uh, kilobits per second range. You can, you can only carry so many signal voltages per second, right? Well, with USB 2.0, you're working at, you're operating at 480 megabits per second. That's millions of bits per second, as opposed to thousands of bits per seconds or tens of thousands of bits per second. A huge difference. And now with USB 3, you're looking at five gigabits per second, 40 gigabits, well, 20 gigabits per second, if you have dual lane, depending on how much data. Basically, the point I'm making is with the USB standard, you can pipe so much more data and information across a board in the same amount of time as your other communication protocols. USB also can do excellent power delivery, okay? With USB power delivery or PD, you can get up to like 100 watts just on USB-C. I'm gonna speed, I'm gonna go through a bit these benefits faster so we can get to the good stuff, okay? The USB protocol, well, and the connector really, is has a compact design. It's very compact. It's cost effective as well because of how standardized it's become and just how it's built, its makeup. Also, the USB, um, if you don't know this, there's an organization that made the standard, right? And it is future-proofed. It has future-proofed the USB communication protocol and standard so that it keeps evolving with kind of the same ecosystem, 
All right, it gets faster and faster. Why was USB developed? Because of the various connections that were just all over the place. There were inconsistent data transfer speeds and configurations, meaning you had one device that would operate at one speed, one baud rate, and another, com another device that would operate at a different baud rate or speed, and they could not talk. Go in your hyper terminal or whatever USB, whatever, excuse me, serial communication protocol, software, or tool that you'd work with and try to send information from one bot using one baud rate or speed to another machine using a different speed. You're going to get garbled data. Okay. And you have to buy new connectors for each type of communication you want to do between devices. So, some organization said, we're going to standardize this thing. We're going to standardize it, make it easier for everyone. Okay. Now, US, that's the protocol, USB 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, and all. Those are the speeds and protocol. It doesn't matter what connector you use. However, you're going to want to go with a connector that is built for that standard to make life easy. So you will need... So the most convenient is a USB type A connector, type B, type C. Again, these connectors, they're not the protocol. They just happen to work and be built properly for the protocol. Here you have electrical specifications. So that we're getting into the D plus and D minus lines. What are they even talking about? Well, let me show you. Let me show you. Let's get into some practical stuff here. So if I pull up this software, this is called Altium Designer. Now, if you don't know, I'm an electrical engineer, a hardware design engineer. I design and create hardware, the electronics inside your computers, your computer motherboard, stuff like that. I used to work at Intel as an electrical engineer level three, spe uh, specifically in the hardware design team. And what we do is create these printed circuit boards from scratch. How do we do that? Well, we draw up some kind of schematic, okay? Let me give you an idea. We draw up a schematic, like some plan for the USB. We would use symbols to show our plan for how we want to put, this is a USB connector and a controller. You have chips that would control the protocol and then these wires, right? So here's what's happening. You have this connector, it has some wires that shielded, wrapped around with the cable. What's inside this cable are these wires, these electrical wires and traces. Conceptually, it looks like this. It looks like this, conceptually, let me see. USB type A, this type A connector. Well, the connector is supposed to be here, I don't know if it is why it disappeared. And then you have the, no, no, this is the connector right here. And you have these wires. It's the concept. The wires go all the way into some, you know, some board. And the board is going to access some, eventually connect to some chip inside on a printed circuit board. The printed circuit board looks like this. Let's just assume this is the printed circuit board that's inside that game controller. Okay. And our wires are connected here somehow, you know. By the way, you can enroll in my Elite Hardware Engineer course, which is on sale if you want to design your own USB board. In fact, in fact, really, really what I should say is that you have the connector here, the cable going through the, you know, some wire, if you can imagine that, and then another cable end connecting in here, and then here's the printed circuit board. Then you have these things called traces, PCB traces, printed circuit board traces, like just, it's just like your computer motherboard. There are these copper traces that then carry these signals through the rest of the printed circuit board. And these little signal traces are carrying the electric, the voltages. And then these voltages get moved to these different chips. The chips do some talking at the right speed. They push out information and data. Here's a USB-C connector. You connect another cable or wire to here. That cable takes the signals from 
the USB-C connector that were trans transmitted into the board, that cable and its other connector go to some other device. That's how that works. Okay. How fast you do that, that just depends on the communication protocol, not necessarily the con not the connector, okay? And if you want to handle certain power levels, you need certain wire gauges and, you know, certain connectors that can handle enough current. The printed circuit board needs to have thick enough traces on the PCB to handle enough current and so on and so forth. Now, how do we learn about this standard? Well, you can go to the USB.org website and download the standard. The standard talks about USB 2, USB 3, so on and so forth, okay, from a document. It'll tell you the electronic signal voltages. What do the voltages need to be and look like? What the waveforms need to look like to, be, to satisfy the standard of communication? Okay, like I talked about, USB is used in peripherals like keyboards, smartphones, everywhere, really. In your car. And now you have an idea of what every USB device you have looks like internally in your, in your hardware. Okay, if you were to break this open, it's got a printed circuit board in it. And this connector is has some traces that are that are manufactured into the printed circuit board. They carry the signals, and there you go. And if I want, I get a cable that has its wires that run the USB protocol communication and signals and voltages to another device that also has a printed circuit board. That's pretty much it, okay? So today we've covered why USB was developed, physical and electrical characteristics, everyday and industrial applications like your computer, laptop, your Tesla, any, really any infotainment system in your car. And then there was a little bit of a exercise you could do. I would implore you to do the lab simulation so you could make your own USB circuit, design it. It won't get manufactured, but hey, you can do some simulation to see what the signals would look like. And what we do as hardware engineers to make USB uh, devices. Okay. Let me know if you have any questions, any uh, concerns, things that you've noticed from using USB connectors and the communication protocol. What's the difference between them if we want to go over that again or anything else? Okay. That's USB in a nutshell. It's faster than your other typical communication protocols. It's more universal. The other communication protocols have their place as well. Okay, I'm not saying you always have to use, use USB. But it has so many benefits of which we've covered. Thanks for watching.